Kayak is a small one-man means of transport, which used to hold great importance for the Inuits. The kayak was an open vessel with a skin cover suspended from gunnel top by means of inserted bone pegs. Kayaks were used only in calm weather. The spread of the use of the kayak in Greenland began in around 1000 AD. There were not many men left who mastered the craft of kayak building in the late 1800s in Greenland. The elders of Greenland devised a system whereby two young men were each given a kayak, which they then had to work with, or else handed over to one of the other young men or boys. The system worked, and thus the future of the kayak was safe for a while. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank anyone who has ever in their life given me any piece of warm clothing <laughs> that I've ever used outdoors in any way. The tidal current was good. I'm interested to see what's going to happen up at the uh, Strongsford Fjord. Nordum Stromsfjord. Nordum Stromsfjord. Yeah. Where the whirlpools have been known to be 10 to 15 feet wide. So, yeah. so the goal right now is. Uh, the search for wood, which I have a feeling is going to be fairly unsuccessful if you do a little panorama of the surrounding area. I think we're about 400 miles from the nearest tree. So, I have a feeling we have to kill ourselves a seal and burn some seal blubber. Yeah, excellent. It is sunny in Greenland every once in a while. It is uh, beautiful today, actually. It's quite, quite warm. Probably about uh, 6 degrees Celsius, maybe. And as you can see, we're layered down significantly. We don't have our wool hats on and stuff. And uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. The mountains are spectacular. And uh, what we have to do today now is uh, get past a couple of fjords with uh, some strong tidal currents through them. And then after that, we'll be uh, smoking. Justin has a char on here. We're at the mouth of a little brook. About uh, a day's paddle north of Sisamut. Supper on the second night of our trip. <laughs> Beautiful two pound arctic char. It's gonna be deadly. <laughs> oh. Go me. The most interesting thing that happened today by far and um, probably the most valuable piece of information we've ever um, encountered uh, in all our dealings with paddling was the Greenlandic family that just stopped by. See, you, see your picture? <coughs> just come over here. We're hoping these lovely people weren't planning on staying. Where are you going to sleep where? Karakcha. Uh, in a Karakcha. 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 And uh, he was very, very quick to um, tell us, uh, tell us in his words, uh, by by pointing to our chart and making swirling noise, uh, swirls with his finger, and going like this at the mouth of Nordum Stromsfjord, uh, and a couple of the others that uh, there were some big tidal whirlpools there for us to watch out. And here, where is the whirlpool? Sure. Here. Sure. Okay. So here. Sure. I'm in the next door. Going all through here. Sure. There's another one on the other side of those islands, he said. Yeah, done right in there. Yeah. Do it in there. Go in there. There you go. <laughs> How do you say thank you again? Uh, oh. Cute or tough. We're going to give you folks a little demonstration of the power of the tides. We're heading up in the Nordenstrom's Fjord. Justin is paddling right toward me.
We're about uh, one hour from low tide, and you can see what this is doing to Justin's boat. So we're going to head up. <laughs> we're going to head up into the fjord now and uh, see if we can cross up a little higher where it's safer. This is uh, obviously a grandmother, a mother and her child that we've run across. 100% complete language barrier. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I believe they're from Atu, which is a community we'll be at in a few days. And they've got something smoking that we're going to take a look at there now in a minute. Yeah. It's a uh, char hanging up. That is awesome. A very nice lady with a complete language barrier somehow understood what we were asking about and come up and showed us their smoking of the char. Which is really neat because this fire, I don't know if you can tell or not, is about 8 inches by 8 inches. It's a little tiny, tiny fire with moss on it. And they pick certain trees around here that I guess burn with more smoke than the others. Or uh, peat. And just the direction of the wind puts the smoke right up through, and the inside is just full of smoke in there at the char. It's ingenious. Your daughter, uh, one, one year? No, two years? Minus one. Almost one. No, Mia, Uma, then why do I win? This is one of the most amazing things I've seen on the ocean. The current flowing through here is unbelievable. It's just like a, just like a river. There's no way you could paddle up that. Absolutely no way. And this is where we came up, right here. As you can see, there's not many places to take out. Take out if you couldn't pull, if you couldn't paddle up. That's where we're going. Looks pretty clear from here. I spotted one of these birds that seem to be all over the place, so I thought I'd uh, get a little footage of him and we can try and identify him when we get home to Newfoundland. I bought this nice new axe, as you can see to my right, from the uh, Outfitters. And Richard has been mocking me continuously since that time. Since the first campsite, there was absolutely no wood. No trees, no driftwood, no nothing. So for the last three days, Richard and I have been stopping into each beach as we saw a piece of driftwood and picking it up and strapping it to the back deck of our boats. And finally tonight, we're enjoying a, enjoying a fire from what we think is probably a wood supply from seven or eight different countries. <laughs> There's nothing in here that grew anywhere in Greenland, I guarantee. So uh, it was shipped in from other parts of the world, almost all of it man-made, so we're guessing that there's probably seven to ten countries worth of wood here and about three hours work on Richard and mine's part to get that wood to burn. seems to be a uh, Greenlandic toy that they, we've seen a number of these. Uh, Justin burned a couple on our fire last night. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked like a boat. Uh, it's just a, just a roughed out shape of a boat in wood. And this one's attached to a stick. I had to take out the uh, video camera just to show you the absolutely atrocious conditions that we're paddling in here inside this inside channel, the Rasa, Rasatok. Just absolutely flat, calm, beautiful.
<laughs> we found this little uh, deserted community here as we went seeking the iceberg, and the community was actually uh, a side effect of looking for the iceberg. We're in the church now, and this church was built for the kayak. You can see there's a Greenlandic kayak uh, frame up here in the uh, rafters of the church. It's actually an entire kayak frame without the skin, but right next to it, I don't know how to explain this, is a big piece of bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a combination of like phenomenal cultural experience here, and uh, if I disappear to the floor, these will have an idea to Justin's here fixing up our frame kayak. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Oh, that is fantastic. Good find, buddy. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Here we are in the community of Atu, which is the first community that we've encountered since we left Sisimut. And uh, there are more dogs in this community, more sled dogs, than people. And a uh, very, very rural community. Excellent. That's what you call sea cockpit, right? <laughs> Do you have uh, different boats for, for paddling and for rolling? Yeah. Yeah. It, what's, is this a rolling boat? Yeah. That's a rolling one, yeah. <laughs> How's that for your top hand crossing over? It's got to be hard on the arms, though. It's got, such a, it's got such a narrow grip, you've got to cross yeah. over. Still awesome though. Low brace turn. This is going through the narrows and leaving us. Oh, there you go. Nothing but fog as far as the eye can see. This on one of our biggest open crossings of the whole trip. And if you look inside, I don't know if you can see or not. There's, there's I'll a piece. I'll try give you a little more light so you can see. Okay. There's a wooden pin like this. Yeah. And when he pulls on, he pulls the string off the end of the wooden pin, releasing this rope and allowing this to slide down and close the door behind him. Yeah. I'll give you a tick fox cubs that the Greenlandic hunters are hoping to catch. And they've obviously managed to out-hunt the Greenlandic hunters. As the trap down below is empty, and there's a full family living just a few hundred meters away. Fortunately for poor Richard, he decided to stay and pack up his gear. So while I'm on top of the mountaintop, feeling like I'm in National Geographic, Richard is all the way down here, getting ready for the base paddle. We're about to witness a Eskimo, a rolling demonstration, Greenlandic rolling demonstration with this absolutely beautiful Greenlandic boat. Child. Child, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Han, who, who, who taught this, who taught this gentleman to roll? Yes, who who taught him? You were just telling who who uh, showed him how to do this the uh, the role. His father. His father? Yeah. How, uh, what what's the man's name again? Sorry. Elni. 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 Meaning uh, son. Meaning son, and he doesn't speak he doesn't speak English, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why we have Han here. Yeah. How many different uh, ways does he have to roll, huh? 
15 ways to roll. Greenland sculling brace, we call that back home. When what when did he learn to to do this? How old was he? Yeah, yeah. A child. A child. Yeah. Oh, he, he did went to the stern and then to the bow with skull. I think it's the cold. reason it's very difficult to roll is it's impossible to hip flick because my legs are flat in the center of the boat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nothing to that, Justin. Go in there, give him a bow. Success. It's a lot tougher than it looks. <laughs> this is uh, Hans and his wife, and they're showing us a, a game involving uh, dried, dried, dried capelin. I'm not quite sure what the game is yet, but they're making <laughs> these things out of dried capelin. And there's a game that goes with this. And I think there's a game that goes with it. And Hans just said that he's not good at this because he's a man and he doesn't have to be the game. It looks like a plane. I think it's a tie. <laughs> That's excellent. Oh wait, no, I think you had to swallow it. You had to tie it into a bow tie or something and spit it out again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's on tape. I think Richard's about to try a piece of uh, raw seal fat, also known as... Acno. Acno. No. Oxo. Oxo. So he's uh, okay. just picking it up here now. I think he's hesitating, pretending it's slippery. Greenlandic fear factor. Slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> what do you think, guys? It's, good, not, bad. Mm. it's not bad. Mm. It's a very little bad. flavor to it. It just yeah, tastes yeah. like a. Eyes. Eyes. I'm saying, look at his eyes. <laughs> his eyes are watering. It's very, uh, very <laughs> greasy. Mm. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm. Okay. Uh, strong. 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 Yeah, strong. 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 Here is a uh, low tide. Low tide or okay. Uh, middle. If you go in the middle, yeah. is that yeah. good or bad? Yeah, middle is uh, good. Those are the mountains of Disco Island, off in the distance, which means we're about one day's paddle from Asiat. And this bay is just full of icebergs. There's a couple behind that island there. And the trip. Uh, tomorrow is a very a 
short paddle into Asiat and the end of our expedition. And yeah, uh, really nice hot shower. <laughs> Excellent. Well, here in our vestibule, we're actually doing quite well with our uh, Ethiopian Yerga Chaf or Yerga Cafe. Yerga Chef. Yerga Chef. Chef. Two days ago, we were eating raw whale blubber, raw <laughs> whale skin, um, raw seal blubber. Um, what else? Good. Well, fish, dried fish. That's not big dried fish, yeah. yeah. So this is it, last night in Greenland, mm. and it's uh, what we've saved for not, the last night. not disappointing. Justin went to the store in uh, Canuckchuck to try and buy some more to take with us so we could finish off the last of the rub. Anyway, when he went to the store, he didn't realize it was one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 24 hour daylight had been completely <laughs> screwed up. I honestly, I thought that I'd get here and my, like Rob, my cousin in Iqaluit, who uh, put us up, was very hospitable to us, um, said that it completely screwed him up so he couldn't sleep at all. And I don't know if it was the fact that we were paddling equivalent to a marathon every single day or what it was, but as soon as I hit the bed, I was out for eight solid hours and I woke up and I was fine. So it didn't affect me in a bad way and it totally takes the pressure off tripping. You wake up when you wake up, you get on the water. If you're late getting on the water one day, you paddle till eight o'clock at night, big deal. You still got 24 hours of daylight left mm -hmm. to get your tent set up. So yeah. it worked really well. There it is, Asiat, 12 days after we left Sisamut. <laughs> this is a friendly face greeting us here in Asiat. This is Hans. And, uh, And the plane circled for two hours and wouldn't land, and they cancelled our flight. And the next flight to go is Monday morning, which gets to Sismu too late for our plane. The Umiak ferry line uh, leaves tomorrow night, but again is too late to reach our plane. So Richard and I were basically stranded in Sismu. So while he watched the things, I Stran went stranded in Asiat. In Asiat, sorry. Yeah. And uh, while he watched the things, I went from person to person to person going down the street, every single person asking if they had a boat for hire that we could hire to take us to Sismu. And then we met this uh, three lovely power boats right here to my right, and they're uh, on vacation heading to um, And we uh, threw in some money for gas, which is basically all the money we had, and uh, they're more than happy to take us. So we're about to cruise uh, to Sisamu on three uh, luxury pleasure cruisers uh, since we couldn't get our boat. So we thought we were in a lot of trouble, but it worked out great. Okay.